Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. Before I get into questions from last week's videos, Falco has sent me out a bunch of gloves, way more than I need. So I would like to give you guys some, a chance to win some anyway. There are three different styles, all of which I have tried. They sent these out to me earlier on this season so I could kind of try them out. I used them in a couple of videos, you might remember that. After I used them in videos, they emailed me and said, please wait, we haven't launched these gloves. They're launching this week actually, October 12th. Is that today? Yeah. yeah, so they're launching today. I'm not sure when this video is gonna go out, but by the time you watch it, they will have launched already. Anyway, they asked me to please wait because they were already getting a ton of messages from you guys wondering where you could get them. So I thought it would be fun to give some away today. So there's three different styles. There's a 701, 702, and 703. This style right here is the one I like the best because it's like the ones I have been using, which are the Atlas Nitrile. They're really, really thin, but I blow through those gloves so fast because of how thin they are. But I really appreciate being able to feel what I'm doing. These are a little thicker, but you can still feel what you're doing and they fit my hand. So my biggest problem with gloves is I can find them that fit these four fingers, but I always end up with extra fabric over my thumb. I must have like a short thumb somehow, I don't know but these fit my hands, which is awesome. Um, so anyway, they come in small, medium, large, and extra large. That's the 701 style. 702 here, you can tell, is a bulkier glove, like just thicker for bigger projects, like maybe if you're, I don't know, hauling wood, pruning roses, things like that, heavier jobs. Um, and they also come in small, medium, large, and extra large. And then this last pair, they're just pretty. I love a good looking pair of leather gloves. My dad always had a pair of nice leather gloves and a shovel in his truck. Like it always that just brings back that memory. Um, but they're really soft. Uh, something that I don't find myself going toward during the growing season, but I could see myself using in the winter time to haul wood. We burn a lot of wood uh, for heat in our house and they're just a really nice pair for that and also come in the four sizes as well. So to win a pair of these, all you have to do is comment below this video, tell me which style you like and what size. So again, style 701, 702, 703, and they come in small, medium, large, and extra large. So just comment with that down below this video. We will choose winners and announce them at the beginning of next week's recap video. Okay, let's get into the videos after I clear the gloves off. All right, so the first video from this last week was the Unique Stone Concrete Unboxing video, which was really fun. I have some projects, in fact, we're gonna work on one of them today, utilizing a bunch of those new containers. I'm so excited about it, and they're so gorgeous. They're just so gorgeous, it makes me really excited. Anne said, what is H-I-G-H-T, height, mean in your measurements? That was a misspelling. <laughs> what happened, it got put in the video like the first time we you know, put the measurements up and then we just copied and pasted all the rest of the times without catching the misspelling there. Um, so that was just one of those things that you can't change <laughs> after the video goes up. Such a bummer. I saw that first comment of somebody like correcting the spelling. I'm like, oh dang, I bet it's like that through the whole video. And it was, and that stuff just happens sometimes. Jackie said, I purchased a concrete pot at an estate sale. It looks very similar to some of the unique, unique stone pots. Is there a way to identify unique stone pots? Are there identifiers on their pots to know that's where they were made? There are not identifiers on most of them that I know of. You could probably snap a picture and send it to unique stone and just ask them like, hey, is this something you have carried or carry? And they'd be able to tell you. Uh, Mary said, so these concrete urns don't get damaged by extreme cold freezing temperatures. They are beautiful. Mine haven't. Uh, we live in, they've moved us to a zone six, but we still get very cold. Like three years, was that just three years ago we got down to negative in the teens? Negative teens and none of my concrete broke. I had one terracotta pot that lost a little bit off the bottom and that's it. A lot of people will clean out their containers and store them, which is the very best way to be a good steward of your pieces. But I like to see them throughout the winter time so I don't wrap mine. I don't protect them in any way. They just look gorgeous and they last for a long time. I don't have any problems so far with them uh, cracking or chipping or anything like that. Jessica said, oh wow, look at all those sacks. <laughs> what do y'all do with them? Um, so Aaron actually put them on Facebook Marketplace, right? Mm -hmm. And he got rid of them within the day. He just said free burlap sacks, come get them. Like first come, first serve, and they were all gone very, very quickly. Melissa said, do they all come with drain holes? Yes, I don't think a single pot out there or one that I've ever got from Unique Stone doesn't have a drain hole that I can recall. 
Drops of Sparkle said, so where are the prices for these? So the prices are set by the retailer. This is, Unique Stone is a wholesale company, so the only way you can access their pieces is through a garden center, independent garden center. So um, the best way to find out where they're carried around you, you go to Unique Stone's website, you put in your zip code in their dealer locator, and then it'll uh, say what, like where the nearest dealer is to you. Um, and sometimes that's close, sometimes it's far. It's worth a shot to talk to your local garden center and say, hey, I love these containers. Cheddar, hello. <laughs> I love these containers. Would you consider carrying them? I do think they have to meet a minimum in order to bring in a load, but it's a pretty low minimum. Um, so most garden centers like to hear uh, from people and like to hear what they're looking for because oftentimes there are other people that you don't know about that have already asked about it. So if they can get together enough interest, they will order. Um, and then it's set by the retailer. So there's like a wholesale price that you know, the retailers pay and then based on your area, they set the price. Um, so that's why we don't include prices because it is so subjective. Uh, Magdalena said, maybe it's time to invest in a box truck. Yeah, it's time to invest in a lot of things. <laughs> box truck, covered trailer, flatbed trailer. We could also use a skid steer at some point. <laughs> we could use a forklift. Oh, I don't know, it would never end. Aaron would have a heyday. Next video was a barn and root cellar update, plus I trimmed some boxwoods and updated some containers that still had dead plants from last year in them. In October. Can't even believe that. Lori said, why not paint the doors black to match the chicken coop? So we considered several things. We considered doing all the doors black on the bottom. That would have been way too much weight at the bottom of the, the barn with that big white expanse and then the black shutters that would have looked too weighted down. Then we decided like, should we do black just garage doors? And I didn't like that look because it was too much black. They almost look, especially if the sun isn't shining right on them, they look like kind of like a hole, like it's too much dark. And then we thought about doing the outer doors black and then I halted that because I really like the clean. I like the clean, the white, it's bright. We can always paint them black if we decide to do that. But for now, I really like the way it looks. Plus, we're kind of waiting too because the third garage door has not been installed yet. They're doing a lot of work out there. So anyway, things may evolve as we go along. A lot of different options. Savannah said, what is the curved knife or saw-like tool you use to cut the dead plant out of the pot? That was a Felco pruning saw, which is probably the very improper way to use <laughs> that tool. Uh, I'm gonna probably need to get it sharpened now, but it's a really effective and fast way to cut a single plant out of the center of a container without ruining all the plants around the outside. Blue Moon Acres said, does the Virginia creeper give you an itchy rash? Down here in Texas, it causes symptoms similar to poison ivy. I have a never heard of Virginia creeper doing that, not to say that it doesn't, but it's never done that to me. I'm not super sensitive to things like that, so that could be why. Like I can get all up in that plant's business and I come out pretty much normal in the end, maybe dirty, but that's it. Uh, Beth said, I love your garden. Are you going to be doing a tour at all? I kind of missed that. We just filmed a tour this last weekend. It should be up sometime this week and it will be a long one. Judy said, are you going to do anything with the scary stairs up to the loft? Yes, we actually had a new set of stairs built and moved to a different bay. <laughs> so the old set of stairs had no support underneath it and it had no railing and they were, do you know how wide they were, Erin? Like two and a half feet? Not wide. Not wide and we were hauling like some big tubs up there and big Christmas tree boxes and uh, super unsafe, especially with Benjamin. Like we were diligent about keeping him off those stairs. So we had a new set built that are like built to code and they have two railings like so there's no way, no they have three railings, I can see it from here. Uh, you would have to try really hard to fall through those railings. So anyway, it's much better. We'll do a, like a grand tour in the end when all the work's done in there. Okay, next video was four fun fall containers. I just used a couple of the new pots are actually sitting right below me here on the ground. Uh, but I just wanted to put together four different takes on fall containers. Fairly simple, utilizing plants that you can find in most areas. You know, mums, ornamental cabbage. There was some lemon coral sedum and, and lobularia in there. I think my parents' garden center carries that right now. And vinca. Um, anyway, just some really gorgeous stuff. Jonna said, absolutely beautiful. I noticed you used wilt stop on the pumpkins. Please tell us more about that. And I wish I would have remembered to talk about that because that was the number one most asked question. I had that spray bottle out. I was spraying my pumpkins and gourds that I was using uh, with wilt stop. And the reason for that is that wilt stop is a natural product. It's made of pine resin. Um, so you spray it on your, your things and then wipe it down. It gives it a beautiful, shiny, clean appearance. Um, it does have a little bit of a smell too. 
So I'm thinking, and I don't know if this is this for fact, but I'm thinking it might deter squirrels a bit too because of the smell being so strong. I can't smell it sitting right here, but if you get up close to them, like put your nose really close to them, you can smell that pine resin smell. And I don't know if squirrels would be deterred by that or not. Maybe, maybe not. Um, but I thought it would be a really fun thing to try out. I've been noticing quite a bit of squirrel activity in our garden lately. Have you noticed? Anyway, uh, that's what I used. It works really well uh, for at least cleaning them up and making them shiny. And I'll report back on the squirrel stuff. Uh, Kathleen said, what plant is draping over the side of the last container? Was it vinca? Yes, that was the second most asked question. Um, and it is a vinca. I don't know how I forgot to mention that. How do I forget to mention so many things? Kathy said, Laura, did you forget you have a saucer that spins? No, I did not forget. Actually, we got it out for the first one in particular because all the rest of the, the three other ones had a back to them. So I usually just keep the back toward me and then design around the front. And I prefer to do it that way. But like the first one, I planted all the way around because it's actually gonna go right on this table right here. Um, we tried to use that spinning saucer, but this shape of this container was like weighing the sides down because it's an oval container and it's really heavy. Uh, and that saucer can hold 250 pounds. So like the weight limit wasn't a problem. It would still spin, but it was kind of teetery because it wasn't sitting properly. So we did try. Uh, Robin said, did you ever stain your concrete? And if so, what do you use? Um, you know what? I've never used like an actual concrete stain on my concrete, but I've used um, Danish oil. <laughs> I've used Danish oil a lot. Um, I've used wood stain often on concrete. We used to use it all the time at the garden center. Like if I wanted a different look on a piece of concrete, I'd go in with Danish oil or wood stain in whatever color and like spruce it up and make it look pretty. Um, and it worked really well. I find with no matter what I use, it's not a once and done. Uh, it's something that you have to keep doing, especially in our area where we get such bad hard water. You have to like constantly do like a yearly refresh of your pieces. And that's why I always go with the aged stone color on my concrete because I used to buy color, like different colors. And then it became a maintenance nightmare. And I, it's not something I want to do on most of my containers. So like the aged stone takes the hard water fairly well. It looks like kind of a, kind of a patina a little bit. I don't notice it as much and then I don't have to be a slave to um, staining them every single year. Next video was taking care of mealybugs and the first comment was uh, Joan said, why the kitchen, Laura? I, I don't didn't anticipate how triggering that would be to so many people, but there is a reason for it. The reason why I did it in the kitchen is one, I can do it standing up. It's very comfortable. Two, I do not want to take it outside right now and hose it down and possibly leave live mealybugs or live eggs that are not damaged that could possibly hatch and create a problem for me outside. Don't want to do that. Uh, three, I'm totally not worried about the kitchen plumbing. I had a two strainer system in place. First, I had the colander, um, which is where I rinsed everything off into the colander first. And it's got kind of like bigger holes, but it catches most. And then I have the, the uh, stainless steel strainer at the bottom of the sink, which catches everything else. So like there's a possibility that a tiny bit of soil went down the drain, a tiny bit, but I wasn't just putting like straight soil down into my plumbing. But either way, there were some of you guys who were like, that's what I do. It works great. Never had a problem with my plumbing. That's where I am. Um, and then you can just, it's such a contained area. You can just bleach everything and clean it. You can't do that outside. You hose it all off and then you're like, well, I mean, I'm not going to come outside and bleach all of my, like, I don't know where it's splattered to and all of that business. So anyway, that's why I used the kitchen. Plus they're smaller plants and yeah, that was actually one of those videos where I went through in the morning and I answered like as many people as us. And I don't usually take the time because there's usually a lot of comments and it's like, I read through stuff. I just don't have time, especially that went out on a Saturday, right? So it was like our weekend mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, usually like we try to take some downtime but I went through and I tried to address as many of you guys that had that concern as possible. Like I see where the concern comes is coming from. Um, but yeah, I just did not even think about it. Stuff like that doesn't register for me. Michelle said, I'm dealing with mealybugs. No idea where they came from as these plants have been inside for a long time. They can actually come in from produce too, like that you bring into the house. They can come in from any new house plants that you have uh, brought in. Maybe you've repotted something recently and you had some soil that maybe was had some of the eggs in it. I mean, they can still enter your house. It's then once you get them, and they're so gross. Ugh. Uh, hopefully, you're not dealing with a problem like I was, though, because boy, that was bad. They were thick. Um, anyway, she said, "I'm on round two of spraying. Any suggestions on neutralizing the neem oil smell? I don't know of a way that you can do that. I don't notice it for very long, though. I mean, definitely when you spray it, you're like, oh yeah, that does have a smell. Um, but 
for me, I feel like it goes away really, really quickly. I don't know. I know that it doesn't smell as bad as some of the fertilizers and stuff that we use. I think I'm kind of immune. <laughs> uh, Jenny said, can you explain why you would not spray the neem oil in direct sunlight? It can damage leaves. You don't want to spray any oil-based product outside or inside and have it be sitting in bright sun. So that's why we always do all of our sprays like at dusk. That's the best time to do any spray anyway for any kind of um, plant outside or inside because then you know you avoid you know hurting any pollinators um, and then you avoid any kind of damage that the sunlight and the oil product could cause. Kathy said since you are expecting do you have to take extra precautions? You know, I don't worry about it too much when I'm spraying something like neem. I wasn't in an enclosed environment either, like the doors were wide open, the fan was blowing. Um, and I mean, when it comes to the toxicity of, of things, I mean, you can tell on a bonine product, for example, if the, the label has a brown swoosh, it's a natural. If it has a purple swoosh, it, swoosh, it's a synthetic. And it's just so, so low on the scale that, I mean, maybe if I was in a room that had absolutely no ventilation or anything like that, it's something to think about. But in this case, I wasn't worried. Cynthia said, wait, how is it taking it to the kitchen, isolating the plants? Couldn't you infect other houseplants along the way? Or is there not much chance of that because they don't move much? Yeah, I mean, there's always a chance that you could infect something along the way. I don't think I have any houseplants along the way. That pathway was pretty clear. Um, yeah, I mean, we were whisking it through so quickly and taking care of the issue and taking it right back out that I didn't worry about that as well. I think that's why I get so much stuff done because I don't worry about crap like that. I don't know. Like I just do it and then I just sanitize the area later and deal with issues as they come up and don't worry about it, man. And the very last video from this week was arranging flowers that Aaron gathered from our garden. And that video was just kind of a fun, I thought it'd be a fun challenge for myself as well as for Aaron. He's interested in gardens. He's interested in plants a lot more than he used to be. And I'm not sure that he's ever like, Aaron, have you ever, ever gathered flowers for anything like that? Like just gone around with a bucket. Nope. It's, it's fun and it's kind of freeing. And you look at things differently because you're not just like, like sweeping by something quickly and just like, oh, that's pretty. And then moving on to the next thing. It's like, no, would that work in this arrangement? Should I get this? And I think he had fun because he picked out some kind of weird stuff and some really bright colors that he knew would challenge me. In fact, the arrangement is right here. I don't know if they could see this the whole time in the camera or not. It's been sitting out here overnight even on this table for the last couple of days and it's doing really, really well. It's holding well because it's staying cool out here. Anyway, David said, where are the garden tours? Oh, I think I answered that earlier. We will have one up for you this week. Uh, Belle said, awesome job, both of you. Question not related to the video, but you guys did a container competition this year, right? I know this year has been crazy, but I don't remember seeing any updates. Um, so we did a container competition with the self-watering containers. We took 10 of them to our church and Aaron planted five, I planted five. We did one update. Was it like a one month update or a two month update? It's a two month update. Yeah. And that's all we did. Yeah. I don't know what happened. Did we just kind of oh, forget? Yeah. Yeah, kind of COVID screwed everything up a little bit. Um, anyway, so we did a two month update. We haven't done another update. They're still sitting there, right? Yeah. But they're probably... A couple plants have died at this point. Yeah. Uh, but some of them were looking surprisingly good. Were they? Yeah. Hmm. Well, I don't know if we'll do another update of those though. Probably not. Um, next was from who made the word word. Does Aaron have multiples of the same plaid shirt? <laughs> <laughs> no, he has a lot of plaid shirts, but none of them actually are the same. No. It's kind of like me, like, you know, I find a tank top, I recently found a tank top I like, so I bought nine of them <laughs> because it's inevitable that when I find something that actually works and it's hard, you guys know when you're out in the garden, like for videos, I want to make sure that my, my shirts stay up and that they stay down and we do a lot of moving and it's incredibly hard to find that. And so once I do, like if I don't stock up, I will be so disappointed because they always discontinue them or they just stop, you know, whatever. I can't find them anymore. So if they're reasonably priced, I will stock up. Uh, Marilyn said, I always have a smile when you and Aaron do gardening together. Aaron, you did an awesome job. Good job. There are so many cut flowers in your garden. Do you plan to do other things with them? So we've done several things. First off, a lot of cut flower arrangements um, have come into our house, some of which we filmed, a lot of which we haven't. Um, I've given arrangements away to people like that we're doing little events or little lunches or what, things like that. Um, I've given them away as gifts. I've had friends and family and neighbors come and cut. In fact, this last week, uh, I sent out an SOS to family, friends, neighbors, and just said, please bring buckets and come cut because our first frost, we have a 30 degree night uh, projected on Thursday night of this week. And so I just said like, 
come get them. Like come get all that you can so that we could utilize these because right now I don't have time to put together, you know, a whole bunch of bouquets. The goal was to be able to take them to hospitals and nursing homes in our area if it was a successful year. And we will do that in following years, I'm sure. But we weren't able to make contact. We tried with the nursing homes in our area, the hospital with COVID, everything is still pretty much in lockdown. And I don't know, I didn't want to make anybody feel uncomfortable. So my mom and I did do a free flower day where we put together some bouquets. We gave away, I think, 75 bouquets downtown in our city. That was really fun. So it's just been a, it's just been a great year and it'll evolve. I think next year we'll do less sunflowers, probably more dahlias. And I did figure out like there's a couple of things I won't grow like straw flowers. I won't grow those again, probably like they're okay, but I don't love them. Um, and then I need to grow more envy zinnias because they fit in with everything. They're a great filler flower, things like that. It was a really good year to learn. Robin said, I love this so much. Isn't it fun when the hubby gets interested? Yes, it is so much fun. I love it. Love it when you will be in a video with me, Erin. You need to do that more. Anyway, Robin is always so encouraging. She's been following us for a really long time and all of her comments are so uplifting. There's a lot of you guys who I notice like uh, common names that come up with such encouraging things that you have to say. And that always is a really good lift in the morning when I see that. Uh, Mary Jo said, you both did a great job. Proud of Erin for knowing at least some of the names and that vase is gorgeous. Where did you find that? I got that at Marshall's. I got that along with a couple others at Marshall's. That's like the first section I go to when I go to Marshall's or TJ Maxx. And that's what I look for at antique stores. I always look for containers like vessels of some sort that will hold flowers and hold water. And the last question was from Cynthia. Where did the red point maple leaves go? They are in here. Ugh. Right here. Well, Russell, <laughs> maple leaves are right out here on this side of the arrangement. It looks like the Angelonia hasn't held. It could be the cold, but everything else in this arrangement looks amazing. And the Angelonia looks like like a little bit wealthy. Interesting. So that's it, you guys. That is this week's recap. Remember to comment down below if you would like to win a pair of Falco gloves. Remember just to comment with the style you like and the size. So there's the style 701, which is the thinner glove, 702, which is a little thicker, and 703, which is the leather. And they come in small, medium, large, and extra large. Russell's climbing up in the Japanese maple tree. <laughs> Anyway, thanks guys. I hope you're having a great day and I hope you have a great week and we will see you in the next one. Bye.